Hello again, Nightmare Society. I've gathered up a few true stories for you tonight that really creeped me out. Thanks to the contributors, user Manes420, user Daniel Harbinger, user AJ Redonculus, and user the Pancake1037 for sharing their true stories with us. Also, thank you to the people who've been reaching out to me via Instagram. I appreciate you taking the time to comment and message me. Hugo sent me a really nice message about the podcast, so thank you for that, Hugo. Luana, all the way from Brazil, commented, and I just thought that was so cool. Thank you, Luana. And I'm probably going to mess this up, but Kala or Kayla also known as Geek89, wasn't able to leave a review on her app, but left a really nice comment on Instagram. I can't remember if I mentioned that already, but just to be safe, thank you, Geek89. Now that your guard is completely down, let's get on with the stories. So get comfy and prepare yourself for another episode of The Nightmare Society. I was 12 at the time, and I had grown really long fingernails. They were also filed into a sharpish shape. Since I didn't know how to ride a bike yet, I decided to go to the field with my brother, who was around 10 years old. He brought his bike and I started to learn how to ride a bike on a secluded kind of path to the left of the field entrance. About 10 minutes after arriving, a man goes into the field, which I thought was odd because he didn't have a dog or anyone with him. I just continued trying to ride the bike. Skip all the boring stuff, but when I started walking back down the alleyway, it was getting dark. My brother decides to bike away from me. I was fine with this because he'll meet me at the end of the alley. I hear footsteps behind me and you guessed it, the same man is walking the same direction. I carry on walking, a little creeped out. Suddenly this creep gets behind me in a headlock and covers my mouth. I was kicking and trying to scream. Then I literally clawed at his hands as hard as I could. He screams in pain and my nails are bloody as all get out. And I run away. I told my parents and we called the police. Sadly, he was never caught. So to the random creep that I scratched, let's never meet again. I live in a small, crappy town in a big, beautiful state called New York. I reside in a two-story apartment with a front and back door. One Saturday night, I had a hankering for a midnight snack, so I strutted down the stairs adorned in my Saturday night apparel, t-shirt and boxers, into my kitchen. I barely was paying attention to my surroundings until I noticed a face peering through my kitchen window. The only way in was going around my house into the backyard, so this dude must have taken quite a few wrong turns. The man was peering straight through me. His eyes did not move, but he just stared. I held eye contact for about 12 seconds until I could finally stammer out. Hey, do you need something? Silence. Just peering in. Uh, buddy, do you need some help? Still silence. I just book it upstairs to find some sort of weapon, just in case he makes some rash decisions. 
By the time I make it back downstairs, armed with a novelty Valley Cats baseball bat the size of my forearm, he had vanished. I look out the side window into the gangway that leads to the backyard, and there he is, stumbling like a drunk through the gangway. He seemed to be holding something. A knife. Like a big pocket knife open in his hand. I'm about two feet away from this psycho, separated by a small window. I promptly turn white and close the blinds. This guy didn't even turn to look at me. He just kept walking. Oh, but that's not the end of the story. Not by a long shot. The next night, around 8.30, the doorbell rang. Shaken up from last night, I peeked through the curtains to see who was there. As I peered out, I quickly realized I was peering right into the eyes of the lovely man who had visited me the night before. We were both one inch from the glass, and it got real intimate. After slamming the blinds closed, I debated calling the police. A few seconds after, however, he just left. Not a single word. After that, I would receive the same strange visitor at random hours of the night, and from then on would call the police each time he decided to show. It's been a while since the last incident, but I'm not very optimistic. So... Weirdo with a knife probably staring through my window as I type this. Let's not meet. I felt I had to share this encounter because honestly, I never thought I would experience anything like this myself. Sure, I've read all the no sleep posts and freaked myself out, but this was different. This wasn't a scary monster or even a ghost. This was a close call, or so I believe. Some quick background leading up to the night in question. I am graduating from university tomorrow, so I was determined to get an early night. I had gone round to my friends for a wee spliff, but don't get me wrong, I am not a pothead. It was more of a celebration. Anyway, I remembered I had to take my mom to the hospital. Nothing serious, but she had to be taken and picked up. Then I remembered we'd rolled the joint in the car. Disaster. She would smell and see it everywhere. So I made a mental note to stop and vacuum the car. We have a 24-hour petrol station really close to us. But it's sort of on its own, as in there are no houses or buildings around. I pull in and look over the shop. They use a hatch after 12 and don't allow you inside. But I didn't need anything. It had just ticked over 4 a.m. and I had to be up at 10 a.m. So I wanted to just get this done and get out of there. The vacuum machine was behind the coal shed, but it was well lit. I cranked on some music on my phone and got to work. One pound for four minutes of vacuuming. Not bad, I thought. No one else was in the parking lot except for one white van, but the guy inside was yelling wildly into his phone. Not loudly just making a lot of gestures. I felt for him, probably some guy who has been driving all night, but hey, I cracked on with the work at hand. Then I looked over again and caught his eye. He looked away and I laughed. Love at first sight, I thought to myself. I was in an amazing mood. Then it started to get weird. The summer sun was already starting to rise and the street lights went out. 
including those illuminating the petrol station. It wasn't that dark, but it was noticeably creepier and I was keen to really get a move on. I stared over at the van and saw the man watching me again, still talking on his phone. But then something happened that I really, really freaked out at. I saw someone lean forward from the other seat and peek around the guy. That's when I realized the guy on the phone was in the passenger seat and wasn't driving. I hadn't noticed when I first drove in, but I shrugged it off and set the vacuum cleaner back, ready to leave. I threw all my stuff back into my car and went to unlock the door when a voice said, Excuse me. I swear I nearly crapped myself there and then. My heart was absolutely pounding, but I recognized the voice. The petrol station was a spar, the same chain of stores I work in, and the guy who'd spoken was my old supervisor. He had moved to the 24-hour store not too long ago. He began to shout at me for using the vacuum so late at night. The two guys in the van just sat and watched us as if waiting for him to go away. Then he said something to me that made this whole situation real. I'm going to have to ask you to come inside. We aren't allowed to let customers in past 11, even in stores that are open until 12. This is a big no-no, especially as I knew I wasn't doing anything wrong. I allowed him to lead the way and the moment we were in the store he put the shutter down. He told me he'd been watching the guys in the van and they had been sitting there for nearly three hours. Little did I know my old supervisor saw someone get out of the back of the van and as he described it, put a bit of masking tape across a few of the zeros in their number plate, effectively creating a new one. I began to panic. Looking outside, I noticed the van was gone. After checking the CCTV, it was shown that they sped away the minute I was taken into the store. We called the police and they examined what little footage was there. They took the tape and thanked us for bringing it to their attention. At one point on the CCTV, the guy who got out of the back of the van turned to get back in and it looked like he had a knife in his hand. I realize I sound dramatic, and this story isn't exactly thrilling, but I cannot imagine what would have happened if my old supervisor hadn't been looking out for me. I'm never vacuuming at 4 a.m. anymore, that's for sure. So, a few years back, I was cruising around with my brother, cousin, and a few friends. We decided to go down this creepy back road. We got to the end of it, and there was a trail that continued off of it. We decided to get out and walk the trail, even though it was pitch black out. We didn't really have a good feeling about the place, but we pressed on anyways. Now, let me say that if anyone else had come down the road, we would have seen their headlights in the woods. So, after walking for a little bit, we all went back to the cars. My friend Alex stopped and said, What's that noise? We all stopped talking and heard a hissing noise. His tires on his car had been slashed. We all panicked because nobody else would be at this dead-end back road in the middle of nowhere this late at night. So we got in the cars and took off. Not too far down the road, his car was undrivable and we had to squeeze him into our jeep. We went to a gas station to get some snacks and when we came out, the jeep's tires were slashed too. 
I don't know how that could have happened. So it seems like someone had followed us and slashed our tires. So, creepy forest dwelling tire slasher. Let's not ever meet. I just learned of this story over the weekend when my Uncle S was in town. He's always been a jokester, and growing up he'd always been pulling pranks and laughing. I don't think I'd ever seen him serious before this moment. He's a huge car fan, and asked to see my new Infiniti G37 sedan. So I took him out in my grandpa's driveway to show him the car with my dad. We did the usual pop the hood and rev the engine type stuff, and we all pretended that we knew what we were looking at as we stared into the hood of my car. When my uncle said he wanted to tell us about something that happened to him in college that he felt would serve as a good lesson to me. This is honestly the first time I'd ever heard him talk very serious, with a tone of fear in his voice. He was actually trembling as he first started telling the story, and he said that he had never told anyone about this before. But seeing me with my new car and the fact that I'm a young guy made him want to bestow the knowledge on me. My uncle went to a rural college. The campus was in the middle of a town of about 10,000 people. Most were just college students or worked at the college but some of them were locals. He moved off campus his junior year and lived about three miles outside of town in the bar districts. After having quite a few beers with his friends, he decided he better walk home since he had an exam in the morning. As he was walking down the country road with cornfields on both sides of the road, a man in a truck pulled up who appeared to be a friendly farmer. He offered to give my uncle a lift to save him the walk. My uncle, being drunk and not thinking straight, took him up on the offer. He got in the front seat and they took off. He gave the man directions to the house he lived in with his college buddies, and then about five minutes into the drive, he noticed that the man had gone past the turn that he needed to take. He informed the man that his house was behind them and he needed to turn around but the older farmer man said that he'd lived in his town for 50 years, and he knew a shortcut that he would teach him. That's when my uncle began to get suspicious. He started asking questions and surveying his situation. The farmer had a final destination as he continued down the road and then eventually pulled into an old driveway with a very old barn that was falling apart. My uncle said the roof was halfway caved in. My uncle's plan was to bolt the second the man slowed down. So when the farmer slowed down and parked, my uncle pushed the unlock latch and gave the door a shove. The lock had been sawed off, and only part of it popped up. At this point, he knew he was in for it. The driveway was made of gravel and there was a very old playground set in the front yard that was completely rusted and falling apart. There was also a shed in the back of the property, behind the barn that he said had lights on, but the rest of the property was dark and only illuminated by the headlights of the truck and the moon. My uncle ended the story then very abruptly with, Then I fought him off and sprinted home and said let's go back inside my dad stared at him the rest of the night and kept to himself i don't think he wanted to admit it but something obviously happened at that farm never accept rides from anyone I hope these stories gave you the chills and, more importantly, reminded you to trust yourself when your gut begins speaking to you. It's likely correct. 
If you have a true horror story that you'd like to share, I would love to hear it. You can send it to Nightmare Society Radio at gmail.com or reach out to me on Instagram at Nightmare Society Radio and Twitter at Society underscore radio. And even if you don't have a story to tell, I love hearing from listeners. So swing by and say hey if you like. Thanks so much for gathering around the campfire with me. Until next time, sweet dreams. (laughs) 